With the final shape release fast approaching and a legion of new weapons sure to fill our vaults, I thought that now would be a good time to talk about how I keep my vault clean. Whenever I show my dim on stream, I always get asked how I keep my vault so empty or how I have so few weapons, given that I speedrun and play all sorts of endgame PvE content. So today's video is going to be not just about how to clean your vault once, but how to keep it that way for the rest of your Destiny 2 journey. Cleaning your vault is much like cleaning your house. You can hire a professional to do it once, but if you don't have good habits, eventually things will pile up until you are back to a full vault. Before we start, a small disclaimer. This guide is for those who want to absolutely eradicate every last non-essential weapon and armor piece in their vault. If you've done half the steps in this video and your vault is looking a lot trimmer, then you don't necessarily have to continue to dismantle. My standards for what I keep in my vaults are very strict, the strictest of anyone I've met by far, so you don't necessarily have to follow exactly what I do to keep a clean vault. Let's get started with weapons. Right off the bat, we should make sure that no stone goes unturned, so we'll start by emptying our characters and postmaster. Create a new loadout, add one weapon and one armor piece in each slot that you won't dismantle under any circumstance, then turn on move other items away for both. Make one of these for all three characters, then apply all of them. If your vault is full and Dim is unable to fully empty all of your characters, that's fine. You can either move additional weapons into your keep loadout, or you can deal with the excess weapons later. Now, let's open our vault. Generally, when I help people clean their vaults, I start with sunset weapons. We are at a time where practically zero sunset weapons are relevant in the PvE sandbox, with the exception of mountaintop in speedrunning. While there's certainly sentimental value in keeping a cherished unobtainable sunset roll, I'm just here to tell you that by keeping sunset weapons, you are acknowledging that they are for just that sentimental value and nothing more. As for PvP, it is to my understanding that the vast majority if not all sunset PvP weapons have been power crept in 2024, and those that are still hanging on to a sunset PvP weapon are certainly capable of knowing what to keep and what to shard. Next, let's move on to exotic weapons. A lot of people have way more exotic weapons than they need, go through them one by one and determine which ones you actually use, whether it's in PvP or PvE. Kill trackers and infusion status can give you some hints on what exotics to dismantle first, but the guiding principle is that almost all exotic weapons are re-obtainable at any time, whether they are craftable or simply a static roll. With that in mind, if you want to really minimize your weapon count, only keep exotics that you use regularly. I'm not a PvP content creator, so I'm not going to give any specific advice on crucible weapons, but from what I've seen, the most common excess PvP weapons are the spoils of a farming session that haven't been tested or cleaned, unused rolls collecting dust, and multiple redundant versions of weapons that serve the same purpose, whether it's the same weapon, the same range, or the same slot. Now let's get to the crux of the matter, legendary PvE weapons. Most people have a lot of these, and it's going to be a challenge to sort through everything. That said, there are a few tools you can use to help you out. If you really only care about keeping optimal weapons, then the list of weapons you need is fairly short, especially if you're not doing anything niche like speedrunning certain activities or doing specific lowmans that require odd weapon choices. I have a speedrunner shopping list as well as an endgame analysis sheet that both provide information on the most essential roles for doing damage and clearing ads, and while that can provide some guidance, ultimately, you know the content that you play better than I do. That being said, there are some pitfalls I think I should warn you about. First, there is no need to keep a primary or even just a weapon of every affinity. Long gone are the days of match game and while today there are surges and overcharges, in most activities it's enough to simply have a weapon that matches the overcharge, and really only your power weapon really tends to matter when it comes to putting out big numbers in Master Raids or Grandmaster Nightfalls. For this reason, I have a rocket and a machine gun of each element, but besides that, it's up in the air. As you've seen, I have almost no primaries given that double special is still usable in the content I play with the loadouts I use, and my remaining special and power weapons are selected for potency reasons, not for affinity reasons. Second, in PvE you'll often run into weapons that simply do the jobs of other weapons but better. A good example is Trinity Ghoul. If you have a bunch of weapons in your vault that are essentially a worse Trinity Ghoul, then why have them? If you have a bunch of energy SMGs but you always end up using your callous mini tool, then why bother? Treasure your strongest options, but outside of subjective preference, there's no reason to keep an inferior version of another weapon. Finally, understand that while it can be difficult to regrind certain weapons, we are at a point in this game where almost every single meta legendary PvE weapon is craftable. If you play the game enough and keep up on patterns, even if you accidentally dismantle something you might want in the future, you will always be 95% of the way to being a crafting session away from having optimal weapons. With how much I rapidly dismantle in my vault, you might think that I've had a moment or two where I've regretted dismantling something in the past. 
But since I keep myself honest about what I use and don't use, about what content I play and what I need for that content, I can confidently say I've never looked back and wished I didn't dismantle something during a vault cleaning. As an extension of the previous tip, a lot of people keep certain archetypes or certain perk combinations on weapons in case Bungie buffs or changes things in the future. As someone that's been keeping a sharp eye on Bungie's weapon releases in relation to the current sandbox, I can tell you for a fact that every time Bungie is going to buff a weapon type or change something fundamental in the game's meta, it's always accompanied by a weapon release. If you need an example, look at Salvo, Forbearance, Apex Predator, Cataphract, and now most recently, Edge Transit. During my playtime, Bungie has never changed something that has made a PvE role I've been sitting on a top contender. And that's natural, Bungie will always want to incentivize players to farm the latest and greatest weapons, and this will inevitably result in the meta skewing towards new weapons. Basically, stop coping over what-ifs and start focusing on what you actually need to accomplish and fill the weapon roles in the content you play. An easy way to look at your vault is like this. The bare bones necessities are either ad clear, champ stun, DPS, or utility options. For ad clear, the best options are exotic primaries like Sunshot, Graviton, Trinity, or legendary waveframes, rockets, and machine guns. For champ stunning, you have your essential intrinsics like Divinity, Bastion, Arbalist, and Wishender. For DPS, you have your core options including rockets, HGLs, swap specials like 140 snipers and GLs, and 1-2 punch shotguns. Finally, for utility, you'd do well to own a solid trace, a decent rocket sidearm, a decent blinding gel in either slot, and an eager edge sword. Additionally, if you play co-op content, you'll probably want Galahorn and Tractor Cannon to assist in augmenting your team's damage. Legendary primaries are borderline unnecessary outside of maybe a couple that are really good for ad clear, think SMGs or hand cannons, and maybe Warden's Law for lucky pants. That's really all you need, it's that easy. Let's move on to armor. Armor is pretty easy compared to weapons since it's all numbers and not subjective perks, with the only small quirks being exotics, artifice armor, and activity mod slots. Let's start with sunset armor, which is even easier than sunset weapons. There is zero objective reason to keep any sunset armor in 2024 Destiny, so any items you're hanging onto are again for purely nostalgic purposes. Exotic armor is pretty easy. Like I mentioned in my Vault Tour video, I keep one copy of each exotic armor piece. Unlike legendary weapons, exotic armor has been getting updated and revamped frequently as of late, and we've seen exotics that were previously neglected, like Apotheos' Veil, step out of the shadows and at least partially into the meta. Now, does that mean that you should keep a Prometheum Spur? No, not necessarily. One of each exotic armor piece is a 100 plus vault space investment, so it's not for everyone. Most people I meet have unnecessary multiple copies of some exotics, while having zero copies of most of the others. As such, my advice is fairly simple for exotic armor. Sift through your dupes and find out which roles actually have the best stat distributions. For PvE, this usually means a big resilience spike and one or two spikes in the other desired stats. For PvP, recovery is more of a priority, but different people run different stat distributions, so I'll let you handle that. At most, you should keep two copies of any armor exotic, outside of unique circumstances like blessing copies or movement-focused armor. Before we get to the heart of the matter, let's talk about some examples of special armor. If you're a speedrunner, you might want to keep some masks or dreamers items, but for most people, the only special armor worth keeping is going to be armor from certain raids. Specifically, I would say garden armor is really worth keeping, since it's essentially a free 40-50% to flat damage boost on Sanctified Mind. If you'd like, Vow and Root armor also have significant impact on damage, but it's not as extreme since Vow armor requires you to specialize in grenade damage, and Root armor is a lower bonus. If you raid a lot, you may as well look to keep your best copy of each armor piece in every slot, since you'll naturally pick up some decent armor over time. Finally, we get to what I'll call Core armor. This is the armor you default to when doing any activity, whether it's strikes, gambit, raids, or even a day one race. While a lot of people will grind out a ton of armor with decent stat totals and then use D2 Armor Picker to identify pieces worth keeping, this tends to result in a huge amount of pileup in your vault from a bunch of armor pieces that are only slightly different from one another. Gone are the days of elemental affinity on armor, you really only need a few core sets of really strong armor. I'm talking 66 plus stat total with zero wasted, good spikes, and ideally artifice slots available. On my Warlock, for example, I'll have a set of Resilience and Discipline spiked armor, and in almost all of my builds with any and all exotics, I'll use these pieces over and over again, using Artifice mods and regular armor mods to account for my exotic stats. 
While D2 Armor Picker can help you microcorrect for variation in your exotic armor stat distribution to squeeze out triple 100s, any competent endgame player will tell you that double 100s is all you need at any level of content. In fact, running something like a 10-8-8 split is totally fine. The only stat that really linearly benefits you in endgame PvE at tier 10 is resilience. I see newer players make fragment sacrifices to achieve triple or even quad 100s all the time, when in reality, having quad 100s is almost unnoticeable in live gameplay. 100 mobility is only really useful in speedruns, 100 recovery is unnecessary in a sandbox where we have incredibly expansive access to induced healing options, 100 intellect is a waste when active super generation mods provide much more gains, and 100 strength is generally low impact given that most melee builds have some way of generating their own melee energy, think he rises, combination blow, into the fray, or just generally gambler's dodge. On the other hand, resilience constantly affects every single instance of damage you take, and the difference between tiers 5 and 6 is the same as the gap between tiers 9 and 10. And since stats are bisected into the top 3 and bottom 3 in the armor display, naturally discipline ends up being the stat to take in the bottom half. And so, yes, good armor is important, but not because you need to min-max useless stats, but because a lot of the time, good fragments come at a cost, and you'll need to get 3 extra tiers worth of, say, resilience and discipline on solar, thanks to Empyrean, Benevolence, and Torches. Now, if you find joy in building out quad 100s or no-wasted, rounded-out stat builds on D2 Armor Picker, I'm not here to stop you. But just like I did during the weapon section, I'm simply here to remind you that doing so is for your own subjective pleasure and not for some real objective gain in endgame PvE. For some people, keeping a ton of armor in order to achieve stat perfection with every exotic armor piece is a goal of theirs. I am not one of those people. My approach to my vault is extremely practical, and as such, I can tell you earnestly that I have gotten through every single piece of endgame content this game has to offer without ever thinking about armor that I don't have while using these same couple sets of core armor as well as my raid pieces for activity mods when I need them. Now for the big question, let's say you've cut your vault down to 500, 450, 400 spaces. The biggest problem most people have with vault space and item management in general is not the cleaning process itself, if I'm being honest. Most people just need a push in the right direction and are mostly capable of cleaning out their vault at least to a decent extent, even without specialized knowledge. The problem most people actually have is vault maintenance. Now that your vault is squeaky clean, how do you keep it that way? While playing, most people are not even vaguely concerned with drops they pick up or allow to leak to their postmaster. It's no wonder that when I help clean my friends' vaults, I often hear them discover items that they had no idea were in their vaults. Let's go over a few things that will help you avoid this scenario. First, you have to learn to play conscientiously and proactively. This game is filled with downtime, cutscenes, load-ins, idling in orbit, waiting between waves and onslaught. What this means is that whenever you pick up a new piece of armor or a new weapon, at least try to assess it before allowing it to leak into your vault. This takes practice, but over time it will become second nature. Second, keep a running inventory of what you have in your vault. Note that this doesn't entail memorizing all 400 items you have in your vault. It just means that you should be generally aware of what sort of weapons you have that fill each fundamental role. For example, what ad clear weapons do I have or use often? Is the item I picked up better than what I know I have? No, toss it and move on. Yes? Okay, tab out to dim, drag your current option over, compare, and take your pick. The more you do this, the more you'll know that 90% of what falls into your lap is dismantle on site if you've been playing the game for a while. Third, use dim filters and organization to help you identify pesky items that have slipped through your farming or maybe armor that isn't being used. For example, you can search is colon new to look for items that you've recently picked up, and the item feed on the right side of the application can also tell you if there's some junk that's made it past your careful gaze. Dim's triage feature also helps you identify whether or not you actually use weapons or armor by telling you if a specific item is in any loadouts. For example, if you have an armor piece that looks pretty decent, but you don't actually use it in any loadouts and you don't have any need for it, then that's one more deciding factor that you can use to help you eliminate it. Fourth, if you're the type to keep infusion fodder on hand, although these days I would argue that is entirely unnecessary, Dim also has power filtering. You can sort your vault by power, or you can filter using is colon max power to search for weapons that are in need of infusion, for example. Dim has an insane amount of filtering capability, so whenever you have some time, I would advise clicking the filters help bar in the search dropdown. Some of my favorites include weapon type, dupes, drop source, loadout status, and base stat filtering, just to name a few. As a reminder, you can use keywords like AND, OR, and NOT to modify your search, and all of these filters can be used not only to identify items that match your filters, but also manipulate them by removing all their mods, pulling them all to your vault, or even tagging all of them as a favorite. 
Finally, I also like to keep track of what I know has dropped or is in my Postmaster at any given time while I'm playing. For example, if my King's Fall team is practicing totems during King's Fall week, I know my Postmaster is gradually filling up over time. So every once in a while, when I know Dim is going to refresh its destiny data, I click the Collect Postmaster button and just delete everything as it trickles into my character. This is where having only weapons and armor that you need on your character at the time comes in handy. Pro tip, remember how we made empty loadouts at the start of this video to remove all the weapons and armor from our characters? Well, you can use that Move Other Items Away feature in your regular loadouts too. I see way too many guardians running around with 9 items in every slot and I'm not surprised that random drops end up in their vaults. Keeping more slots on your character, empty, acts as a buffer, so you can hold more stuff on hand so that whenever you have downtime you are more likely to be able to hold everything you pick up so you can filter through it before it overflows to your postmaster. Well, that's about all I have to say for vault cleaning and maintenance. Halfway through writing the script for this video, I realized that Dim has a lot of features that I use that a lot of people often question me about, so maybe we'll make an advanced Dim tutorial at some point, since it has some lovely features I'm sure its developers would appreciate more people using. That aside, I hope my point about vault maintenance resonates with you. Too many people focus on cleaning and not the reason their vault ends up dirty to begin with. It might seem like a lot of work to be constantly analyzing everything you pick up, but it really does become second nature after a while. There's a reason I know weapons so well, and it wasn't just the tier list, I've looked at countless drops and thought about where they fit into the big picture of my arsenal for the past three years. As for what's coming next, I believe I have an exotic build series to make, and I think Legend Onslaught is actually a better place than GMs to test builds. So I'm excited to try that out. In the meantime, I hope this video has been an insightful look into how to play Destiny a little bit more efficiently and mindfully. See you around.